holding company investments. This is often used by people who have separate entities, separate companies that want to diversify into other investments. Let's look at this for a property portfolio, which is often how a lot of clients view this. Let's say for now you have your own limited company at the moment. So this is a standard UK limited company. Um, doesn't matter how many owners, directors, and shareholders there are. Let's just say you as, you as yourself for now. You want to start building something over here. Let's say this is your property portfolio, or what some people call this is an SPV, special purpose vehicle. Now, as I alluded to in the last set of slides, you can consider loaning money across here to the SPV. The problem you have is that at some point that loan has to be repaid. So if ever you decided, I want to close this company down, you have an outstanding loan or a liability to another company that has to be satisfied. So if you're considering things for the future, such as entrepreneurially, which we've covered in a separate area, that presents an issue because you can't close a company down, exercise entrepreneurially until you've satisfied all liabilities. So how do we overcome that? By having a holding company sat at the top here, you can create a way of moving money out of a company into a separate company without any loans or complicated structures at the end of your business life. So what would then happen at the moment you, you potentially own one share here, and this hasn't been set up yet in my example, we now say that we're going to have the holding company owning, let's just say for argument, say 99 shares in the business, and then you then have one share here. You're still the 100% shareholder up here in the holding company, so you still own all of this and own all of this, or if there's other directors and shareholders, you know, we can add those into the mix as well. But the beauty of this is, let's say you then have £100,000 of profit sat in this company, um, you didn't need or didn't want the money, or you just decided it was excess profit beyond the amounts of money that you drew. So you maybe leave a thousand pound in there as your share that you would draw, and then the other ninety-nine thousand goes up here to the holding company for you to distribute and decide what you want to do with. It's then removed from the company. So if you want to close it down or HMRC attack this company, it's gone. It's moved to a separate entity. Now in my example here, we now decide we want to set up an SPV. So we want to go and buy properties or we want to invest in something. So we decide we're going to move that £99,000 down here as investment into that business. Now this, again, this company is 100% owned by your holding company. So the circle goes all the way around, but there's no loan connection. So you can always keep moving money out. And as I said, at the end of the time, should you want to close this company down, we don't have any complicated structures getting the money back. And once the business is all settled through, and maybe you're just sat in retirement with a property portfolio, at some stage, we could probably close the holding company down. The great side of this is that you have the ability to move money around at your free will without having personal tax liabilities, but drawing money out here at a company and then putting it back into another vehicle over here. Because then you'll pay 20, 40, 45% in personal tax. This gives you the ability to move money post-corporation tax into another entity with full tax control. All of the rental income, as I've mentioned in the previous slides, um, is, is taxable under corporate law. You can have all of your expenses offset within this business. And the only real negative here, I'd say, probably from, a, from an accounting perspective, is you have three separate entities and you'll have three accounting costs. So you have to bear that in mind when you're doing this. There's no point probably doing it for just one property, because it's going to become expensive to have all three entities running. Uh, but if you're building a portfolio, then it's definitely worth considering. To give an indication of fees, holding companies and SPV companies are not really that complicated to run. You're unlikely to run a payroll through here, a payroll through here. You don't need VAT, and if this is property, it's probably not batable anyway. So a lot of the complexity is taken out, so you shouldn't be paying a lot for the accounting for these two entities but you will still have three accounting costs overall. And that's how a whole company tends to work.